episode of Building the X set, it's time to mount up the seats. Now I went ahead and went with uh, Kirky Series 55, I believe they're called like uh, Pro Drag or Street Drag uh, seats. Uh, they're an all aluminum seat. I went ahead and purchased the two Kirky side mounts for those seats. A lot of guys are bottom mounting. I considered that to get the height down, um, but I'm just more comfortable using the side mounts and then making my own brackets. I am not going to be using sliders, mainly number one, because Kirky does not recommend the use of sliders. Uh, and then also the other reason being for height. Now, I like sitting up higher in the car, like being up on top of the wheel. However, passing the broomstick test, which is basically between that roll bar and the front of the frame, uh, placing a broomstick at that angle, your head needs to be down a considerable amount from that angle in case of a rollover to allow you for some movement in the belts as well as having a helmet on. So um, <clears throat> with a slider, even on the lowest settings, uh, I didn't find a reasonable place to floor mount the seats. So um, we had some issues uh, basically staying under that broomstick test. So what I'm going to be doing is showing you guys the brackets I'm making to mount these uh, Kirky seats and then also how I am mounting them at the height and positions I'm mounting them. So let's get to it. Okay, so here is the Kirky 55 series aluminum seat. Uh, I also have the seat cover for it in, I believe it's called Black Tweed. Now to go underneath here, I'll show you guys my seat mounts. Uh, basically, let me move the camera around here, try to get a good angle for you. Basically what they consist of is a couple of one inch steel tubes with um, end plates welded on to them here uh, to help grasp the bar, uh, grade eight, three-eighths bolts going through the floor rail and mounting underneath the floor. And then on top of that, I have quarter-inch steel plate, um, basically quarter by two-inch plate that is mounted to the one-inch brackets. And then my side mounts are mounted using the same type of hardware uh, to that. Now, one thing you'll notice is these X-set stock tubes, by no means any seat that I've seen except the stock Miata seats, will it does it um, bolt directly to these mounts. So you need to make your own mounts in reality. Um, in this case, one nice thing about using this method is if somebody does want it farther up or farther back, they can actually unbolt this bolt here and then drill a new hole up in this area and get another inch or two closer to the steering wheel. The other thing you will notice, let me move the camera around here, is uh, how off-centered, sorry, how off-centered the seat is. You see how it's almost touching the transmission tunnel here. In fact, this, this side mount is basically touching the transmission tunnel. But then it has quite a bit of clearance over here. The reason for that is when you're taller like me, I'm 6'2", um, about 200 pounds. Uh, you can see how close I am. I'm almost touching the frame rail here in the farther back position. And I have a reasonable amount of room back there. And I have it mounted pretty darn close up to the edge here. So uh, that's one thing to keep in track of is it's not necessarily when you look here and go, oh, there's so much room. Even now you can see I am a little bit still off center of the steering wheel. That's a common complaint. Um, unless you refab a new tunnel and build a new tunnel smaller, there's no way you're going to get the seat over enough to be centered on the steering wheel unless you're using a very, very small seat. So these are the 17 inch wide model seats. I probably could have gone with a 16, would have gripped me a little better. I just want a little bit bigger for uh, passengers and other drivers um, to be able to fit in them comfortably in case there's somebody a little more heavy set than I am. I'm by no means overweight. I'm not the skinniest guy in the world either, but um, I'm fairly thin and these more than fit me. A 16 inch would have been fine. So um, the other thing to notice here too is I basically have them bolted in. There's two sets. There's adjustment for tilt of the seat. There's three holes here. And down underneath this bolt is the A. These are the A mounting locations, according to Kirky. Then there's a B mount up here. And then I don't know if you can see, but let me remove that. There's three more holes for tilt adjustment up there. Now, at first I put them on the B setting because I liked the height. I liked the way that it fit on the steering wheel and so forth. I, I thought that was a good position. However, this moving up that far, I had an issue with that broomstick test. Basically that broomstick comes down like this. So when you're taller, it helps because it puts you a little closer to the roll bar. However, um, 
the issue is height is always a concern being up too high. So um, I do have my steering column mounted as low as it can go on the adjustment of the factory bracket. So I cannot pull that down any farther. I just kind of have to live with what it is because of the geometry of what's there. So what I did to battle this, A was going to be too low, the A mounting points. The B mounting points were too high. So what I did is I drilled my own, we'll call it the C mounting hole here, and put it into the lower of the B mounting holes here. And that gave me the same amount of tilt, but dropped the seat down an inch. At the top mounts, I was almost rubbing the broomstick on the broomstick test. Now I'm a good um, about inch and a half below it. So that's how I have that all kind of fabbed up there. And now I'll get into the actual fabrication for my seat brackets. Here are my uh, turkey side mount brackets. As you can see, this is that. And these are just some mock-up bolts here. Um, that is the new hole I drilled, about an inch lower than the B mount point. And then I used the lowest of the B mounting points. And I did the same so on the other side. I drilled those out with 3 8 drill bit, and I'm using 3 8 hardware to hold them on. Then I took a 17 inch long, a quarter inch by two inch uh, steel flat bar, and basically ran those through and uh, mocked it up into these holes here. Now, I, I marked these and then I went ahead and used my drill press to drill 3 8 hole through those. And then these will bolt to this seat, uh, to the seat mount brackets here. And that will be basically my, my seat assembly. Then, and I'll go over to the car here because I have one mocked up. I went ahead and cut a 17 inch piece of steel, one inch steel tube. And then uh, to give it a finished look, I actually cut some eighth inch flat bar, almost two inches long, and basically tack welded it first, pull these magnets off. And that basically allows, and I'm going to go through and fully weld these all the way around, just like I did on the other side. But that basically allows, as you can see here, this, this seat to interlock. So, idea being worst case, say a bolt were to shear or some issue like that, in a front to rear impact, um, I would have a tad more um, uh, holding power there, rather than just basically cutting these to a one by one plate to cover the end of the tube. So I think that, that will lock it in a little bit more. In the future, before we go powder coating, if I like the position, I may actually weld down along here, all around and underneath to the seat bracket just to give a little extra security. I didn't want to skimp at all on weight, hardware, um, mounting position, anything like that. Even if it's not ideal, this is the key thing on the car for safety. Um, the seats and mainly the, the belts uh, just holding you into the car. So no matter what, I want to make sure the seat doesn't snap off and my five-point harnesses don't shear off or uh, or come loose. So that's kind of the main concern here. So now, basically these tubes, what I will do, I will fully weld them, and then I'm going to be drilling through here all the way through this tube, and then a bolt will come up from underneath and then washer and nut on top to tighten these down. Um, they can always be adjusted and unbolted if I want in the future and moved around. So that's basically how I'm doing that part. I'll go ahead and uh, get the rest of these welded up and uh, grind it down and then I will uh, show you what else, or basically what it looks like um, as I go to drilling the holes and mounting the seats. I forgot to take video before I mounted the seat and I don't like you guys enough to unbolt it and pull it back out. So basically this is what we're looking at here. I have the seat all mounted in. As you can see the custom hole I drilled in the side bracket. And let me try to get it down underneath here. You guys can see I tack welded here just to hold it in place while I drilled out this hole through this tube to all the way underneath. And then basically these come up through the frame. You want to make sure the nut side is facing up as the bottom of the car hits the ground you don't want these threads getting mashed up and then it'll be near impossible to remove. It'd be a lot better if the bolt head was just smashed up. So uh, make sure you have those coming up. Basically the connection points are these front to back rails here to the floor tubes, then the quarter inch plate bolts in and then bolts in again to the side mount brackets and then the side mount brackets to the seat.
So one other thing I got to get is uh, Kirky recommends a rear brace, uh, and a lot of manufacturers do for all aluminum seats. As you can see, there's quite a bit of flex there. Just in place of a crash, it gives a little extra security. Okay, so in ending the video here, I figure I'll sit in the seat so you guys can see the mounting position, or seating position, I should say, that I'm at. Basically, uh, this is my height. You can see the roll bar here. Uh, the camera is sitting about five, six inches above the front frame tube right now. So the angle would be something like this. So I'd probably have about this much clearance when I've measured before, a couple inches there. Uh, before, in case of a rollover, um, the front of the car and the roll cage would be supported. That would leave me plenty of room if I'm strapped in tight enough that my head won't come up two inches and smash into the ground, hopefully. So anyways, that's it for this video, guys. Hope it helps give some of you guys uh, an idea of what to do. There are multiple ways that you can mount the seats in this car. Uh, this is just the way I'm doing them. By no means is it the best or, uh, you know, the worst or anything like that. It's just basically uh, one guy's interpretation and idea of what he's going to do. So if you like the videos, please subscribe down below and like them. Appreciate it, guys. See you next time.